Hello, it's Sue Fletcher here, the astrologer. So today I want to talk about Chiron, which is known as the planet of healing. So Chiron was spotted in the sky back in 1977 by an astronomer called Charles Cowell. He was a, a Canadian astronomer, not an astrologer, an astronomer. And um, yes, and at that time, it was just when um, alternative therapies were um, being, um, yeah, coming into the fore really. Um, so things like reflexology or massage or um, a bit of chiro chiropractic work or osteopathy or acupuncture, all those things were, you know, were slightly coming in at that time. And um, actually, if you were doing those kind of things, uh, you were thought to be a bit strange because it wasn't mainstream then at all. But now, all those years later, we know that um, a lot of those things um, are actually in the hospitals. Um, I know reflexology is, and I know Reiki is, and uh, acupuncture is, and counselling is, um, stress release is, meditation. So lots of um, alternative um, things are now in... in um, in the hospitals which is which is great so you can see how far we've come in a relatively short space of time so Chiron um, was um, half man half beast half horse and his parents um, could shape change and so um, they, obviously when they mated they were horses and then his mother um, changed into a humanoid but she just didn't want him. She just couldn't look at him. She, she was disgusted because he was half um, horse and half man. And so she discarded him and she actually asked to be changed into anything rather than be his mother. So she was turned into a linden tree. And Chiron was brought up by Apollo and he was taught um, about medicine and healing and homeopathy but he was also taught the other side of the coin he was taught he taught war and archery um, and so he knew about wounds uh, from both sides um, but he was a very gentle centaur and usually the centaurs are very boisterous they were known to be drinkers um, have no manners they were raped raped and pillaged and they took what they want wanted and Chiron wasn't like that he was a very gentle soul and he was said to be the first astrologer and a shaman so um, where we have Chiron in our birth chart represents where we have our wound and um, it actually takes 50 years to go around our birth chart um, from when we were born and by the time we get to 50 then we really need to have healed the wound on the way round it will square itself and then oppose itself and square itself again before it comes back to the exact position of where it was on the day that you were born and at those times the wound will come up to be looked at there will be an element in your life where it will show and you will be asked um, you know to have a look at it and try and heal it and this is important because we don't want um, our wound to affect uh, future generations so our children and our children's children because as we know we all have stories in our lives which we know and we've grown up with and those stories really uh, you know need to be healed so let's look at where it is in in the chart so if you have it in the first house and I actually have it in the first house um, then your wound is something that you couldn't possibly do anything about and for me my father passed away when I was six so that's my wound and I have done a lot of work on it and um, when I was 50 it's interesting that I was doing a counselling certificate at my local college and I'd not thought about my father but I had to at that time I had to talk about him I had to write about him and I had to face it and I kind of realized that it had affected my life uh, in a lot of ways um, deeply emotional ways 
And so obviously at that time, then I had to um, heal uh, the wound. And I went on to do lots of um, family constellation work, which if you Google, is a great way to, to actually heal your wound. It's, um, it's very powerful and it's very well worth doing. So I have another friend who has Chiron in the first house and for her, um, her family, her, her grandparents were actually all sent to the gas chambers. So that's had obviously a huge effect on her um, subsequent family, her children, herself. Um, and so that, you know, is it's really um, a wound that needs to be really healed. And she has done um, some work with the family constellation um, work as well, which, um, you know, has really worked. So you might have Chiron in the second house. So if you have it in the second house, the house of how you earn your money and it's the house of self-worth, it might be that you have a problem with money or it could be that your parents or your grandparents had a problem with money. Maybe they couldn't keep it. Maybe they went bankrupt. And this is the family story. And maybe you're frightened of going down the same path. It could be. It could then ultimately affect your self-worth. So there could be issues about self-worth there as well. So then we come to the third house. Well, the third house is the house of communication and talking and speech. So it could be that there's a problem with speech. It could be that you're shy. Um, it could be that you've got a stammer. It could be that you were told to shut up and you, you know, you never felt that anything you said was valued. So it could come out in, um, in a few areas, but it, it would probably to do with communication. It could also be something to do with your brothers or sisters, if you have any. It could be that you haven't got any brothers and sisters and you wish you'd had a brother or a sister. So it could it could come out in that way as well, your wound. OK, so then we come to the fourth house. So the, the fourth house is the house of home and your roots and your ancestors. So there could be um, a wound um, to do with your ancestors. Um, it could be that the home when you were small was a battleground maybe there were lots of rows it could be that um you feel that you again um you were you weren't listened to but it's ultimately something to do with the family in some way so um you could because it's the fourth house of home and roots it could be to to do with um a, mo a mother or a father because the fourth house and the tenth house are both to do with parents. So if that's the case, that might have actually affected you and your life. So then we come to the fifth house. Well, whenever I've seen it in the fifth house, it is about the wounding of the inner child. So something's happened and you've, you, you're you very wounded inside. Even if you were grown up, you're wounded and you've carried that wound since childhood. And once you've cleared that wound, then maybe you go on to help other people um, with their, if they have a wound or if they feel that they're, you know, they were persecuted when they were, when they were small. It is the house of children. So it could be to do with not having any children or it could be that you have had problems with having children or your children are a problem or not having children it could be any of those as well so then we come to the sixth house so the sixth house is the house of hope of work and health and again i've seen chiron in the six you know with people who have have an illness and they cure that illness and then they go on to help other people with the same thing. So very often a six house Chiron person will end up being a healer of some sort. And obviously it's the house of work. So you could have a, a wound to do with work. Maybe, you know, you, 
whatever you do you don't like or you don't enjoy or you can't find what what um you know is your passion so it could be to do with that as well so then we come to the seventh house and the seventh is the relationship house and again i've seen this in people's charts who have problems with relationships and this could be um either sex so i know somebody who's a male and he's had problems with men taking from him um pulling the wool over his eyes taking money from him they've been in business together but i've also seen um problems with people with um relationships with um you know like their partner as well and it's like they've come to learn about relationships and um once they do, once they stop making the same mistakes, you know, because maybe they're quite trusting, and then they get taken for a ride again. Um, if if they learn by their mistake and they heal their wound, then it doesn't happen anymore. So now we come to the eighth house, and the eighth house is the psychic house, and it might be that you're psychic. It could be that you. Uh, a psychic and you don't want to be psychic it could be that you um, maybe get um, messages and you don't want that you feel you're wounded by it or um, it could be that you pick up on atmospheres um, you're, you know you can pick up on energy and you take other people's negative energy in and that can be a wound and you could have done that all your life so in a way you what you have to do is protect yourself from other people um, so that you, this doesn't happen there could be a problem um, with with um, relationships it could be sexual um, because it's 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 it is the house of um, of uh, yeah uh, of, of sex as well so it could be uh, that you have a problem um, in that way too so then we come to the ninth house so the ninth house is the religious house it's the house of philosophy it's the house of higher learning it's the house of long distance travel so your wound could be to do with any of those um, it could be it's also the house of belief so it could be that your parents and your grandparents um, were strongly religious and you aren't and then this has been become a bit of a wound because maybe they don't want to speak to you or you you know you've been told that you know they got you've got to follow their way and you haven't done and so there's a wound there um, it could also be that you will learn from this and again go on to help other people and you could well be a teacher uh, okay, so the 10th house. The 10th house is the career house, but it's also the other parental house. So you could um, have a problem with your mother or your father, but I have seen it with people who have problems with their mother. Uh, maybe the mother's not there for them emotionally, or they've got an illness, or they we're not mothering enough or it could be anything um, to do with a parent or a mother um, because it's to do with work I have again found that people um, will heal that wound and then they go on to help other people um, and, and they change their career um, and end up as a healer of some sort probably a counsellor <clears throat> okay so now we come to the 11th house and the 11th house is the house of groups it's the house of the world um, it's the house of the community so your wound could be to do with groups it might mean that you don't like being in a group situation maybe in a group situation you feel you're singled out and you don't like that or maybe you end up being a healer in the community or maybe you travel the world and heal uh, because of the things that you've been through so the idea is that you have the wound and then you heal it and then you go on to help other people I think you can see the way it's going um, so then the 12th house which is the last house so the 12th house is um, a very spiritual house um, 
the wound could be that you feel isolated. You play, might feel like you're the victim and that you feel that you're, you're persecuted in some way. So it's very important that you turn this around, that you're not isolated and uh, that you um, don't look at, um, you know, you don't think to yourself that everything always goes wrong because this is, is a possibility with the 12th. But again, once you've sorted your wound out, spiritual healing and healing through the hands is um, really strong for people with a 12th house Chiron. Um, but you may feel um, a, some kind of secret wounding. Uh, the wounding may have happened um, you know, when you were a child and maybe you've not said anything to anybody. Uh, you may have dreams um, and, but definitely I think with a 12th house Chiron, you've brought um, healing with you into this lifetime to be used. Now, obviously, unless you have your chart looked at by somebody, you don't know where your Chiron is. So um, you could make a guess from what I've said. Um, but um, I, as I said earlier, it is really important that we forgive, you know, the people that have uh, wounded us. And um, that's because we don't need to tell these people, by the way, we can do it silently. Um, but we need to clear it for the future generations because we know if it's not cleared, then it affects our children and our children's children. And this is... It's not really, you know, what we should be doing. So it does take some courage to look at your wound and go and heal it. But it is like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders once you've done it. So I hope that's helped. And um, I will be back again at a future date. Uh, but for now, this is Sue Fletcher saying bye for now.